One of the things that I wholeheartedly believe that you do not need to pay for is that monthly fee for a security system to monitor your home for you. So today I'm going to show you how to set up your own security system with Samsung SmartThings. Hello automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and today I'm going to take the frustration out of automation and save you time and money by giving you a full discussion or at least as full of a discussion as I can give you and a full walkthrough of how to set up a smart home security system that you can self monitor and respond to and really in the end, all of this is going to feel very similar to those security systems that you're paying monthly fees for. And I really hate when people do this because you can do it for a lot less money and you won't spend much time doing this. Now, this is a very, very long video. I realize that, but there are chapters down below that will take you to the different components. Now, what I'll tell you is I'm gonna give you little tidbits about devices, about little settings that you can set up and ha really help you throughout the video. So it kind of makes sense for you to watch this through once or just listen to it in the background and then come back and go to the different chapters as you start to build out your system. The other thing that I want to tell you is there's not any special tools, there's not anything really significant that you need to go out and learn about. This video should contain just about everything you need. So just to give you a synopsis before we get in too deep, I'm going to tell you how this system works and just some of the basics that you need to know. And then I'm going to tell you about the biggest device, which is this hub sitting here. From there, we will go out into the home and look at all the different devices that you will have throughout your home and the different details around those devices. Then we will come back and talk about a couple of unique device types that maybe I didn't show you or maybe you're thinking about and want some more details about. And then we will finally walk through the full setup in the application, how you set up this security system and all the different components. Towards the end of the video, I will talk about very specific situations that, you know, people ask me those kinds of questions and I just want to address them here on one video. Things that people run into with a specific home type or a specific door type or something to that effect. And all of that will be addressed and in the chapters down below in the description. So the first part is to understand how the system works. Now, this is the box for the Samsung SmartThings hub. And that hub uses a number of different wireless communication technologies to communicate with different devices throughout your home. Now, you have probably Wi-Fi in your home today, and that's one of the technologies it uses. And then there's two fancy words called Zigbee and Z-Wave, and they're really just wireless technologies or wireless communication that allows you to go to lower power devices. So they work really well with sensor devices that don't have a plug-in or something you might want to set on a door that you would never have a plug-in at. And that's why they use those technologies to communicate. Now, after that, the hub, what it does is it processes all this information it's getting from sensors and it allows you to create automation and run a security system with cameras and door locks and uh, other device types that we'll go through throughout the video here. One critical component of all of this, your hub requires an internet connection. Now when you go and you buy a, a security panel or a security system, they have a connection that has to be maintained as well. They use different things. Some of these companies use cell service, some of them use other types of service like internet. So it, it does require that internet connection. And in the case of this specific hub, it requires Wi-Fi in your home. Now, one thing about that internet connection, lots of what goes on within your smart home can be executed locally within this hub. So it's not that the hub itself requires the internet connection to do everything. It's that in order to communicate with you, 
and, and tell you if there's a security event happening in your home, it does require that internet connection. Now, when we kind of go out and we talk about what the system can do, well, it can kind of protect you in three different cases. So the first case is security, and I've extended security to different things than just people breaking into my home. I'll give you an example of that. Uh, if I leave my door open for too long and my door sensor gets too cold, well, then I need to get that door closed. I live in Canada. It can be minus 40 Celsius here on any given day in winter. So we need to make sure that that door closes or else we're gonna freeze things in our home. That's an example of security being extended beyond just what we would normally think about. You can also protect against leaks and smoke. So you have smoke sensors that are available and then you have leak sensors, things that can detect uh, water in different situations that you can then use to alert yourself and actually take action in some cases. Now you can extend beyond that. And you know, I used security as a good example of something you could extend beyond. But you know, this is a motion sensor. It's a very simple device. It has a temperature sensor within it so you can sense the different temperatures within your home. But you can also get different sensor types or really different sensor types. Things like humidity and, and that temperature temperature. You can also get lux or light sensors and there are air quality sensors that detect things like VOCs and CO2 and CO and lots of different sensor types that are available out there and then you can go and take action when you sense certain things. So for example, if you have an air quality sensor that says, hey, you got some really bad stuff in the room, you can actually turn on an air purifier and allow that to clean up the air in the room until your sensor says, things are good to go. So you can create these different security features for things like air quality in your life. One of the most important components for how this system works is how does it turn on? How do you actually enable this? You don't have a panel necessarily like you do when you go and you buy from one of these security system manufacturers. So what actually happens here is that most of the interfaces run from your smartphone and it doesn't matter whether you have an iPhone or an Android, if you have a Samsung phone or a Google phone or an Apple phone, it really doesn't matter. All of them can be used to control this system and I'll get into some of the details later in that specialized uh, question part of the video but in general you're not going to care whether or not you have an iPhone or an Android phone and what what happens for the most part or what I like about this system is when I leave the home or when my other family members leave the home here what they what the system does is it automatically arms so once everyone has left and they have to be carrying their smartphone or an arrival or a presence sensor with them, once they have left, then the system turns on. Now the first person who comes home, the system term, turns off or it disarms. So that's one of the ways that this system works. You can also manually turn on and off or arm and disarm your security system as well. So that's a pretty basic walkthrough of what this system is and how it works. But we can now go throughout my home. I wanna show you all the different devices and tell you the different specifications and how they contribute to the system and just give you all that information about all these different device types that I have. Now, the first one to talk about is, we, we can sit right here for it, it's our Samsung SmartThings Hub. Now, this is a V3 hub, it's worth about $70 US and you can get them in a number of countries and even if you can't get them in your country, you can often import and still get the entire service to work. Now, there's gonna be caveats to that and I can't address everything here, guys. So. Those are the kinds of questions you can leave down below. But you buy this V3 hub, that's my recommendation. There is a V2 hub out there, but it is now more expensive and going to have less time of actually working. So that's one important component to think about when you're buying these systems is that over time, they will be replaced by newer models and they may stop working at some point. So this V3 hub, I think it has a lot of years left in it. I would expect five to seven years before it's 
it's something that can't be used anymore and there will obviously be replacements in that same price range for it. So when you go and you purchase that V3 Samsung SmartThings hub, you're going to need to download the Samsung SmartThings application onto your phone. Again, doesn't matter whether you have iPhone or Android, but then they're going to walk you through the installation of this hub. You basically plug it in and because it's Wi-Fi based, you can just use Wi-Fi to get it connected. Now, the process for that. I figured you might need a tutorial video for that, so I did create a basic setup of the Samsung SmartThings V3 Hub. This is just getting it installed the first time. We're going to start in the Samsung SmartThings application and you have to go in there and then you can tap on the get started page. Then you will go into create account and you will have to agree to the different terms and conditions that they have. So go ahead and read those as you see fit. Next, you will want to create a Samsung account. If you don't already have one, you're going to have to fill out these details. And then when you hit the next button at the bottom of this page you're going to be requested to provide a code that came into your email so go ahead check that email account you use and you will find actually three different emails is what I found but then you have to type in a six digit code that is on one of those now once you are done that what you're going to get is this page where you've just logged in and now you are ready to start. Now they offer you two-step verification, which is a very good idea to do these days, but that's not the point of this basic setup tutorial. I'll just tell you that two-step verification means that you get text messages anytime you try to log in to that account, and that means people really cannot get into your account without having access to your smartphone. Now, you have my home up, and this is the basic screen, or this is the start of your whole Samsung account. So what you're going to do is tap on the plus, and this will start the process of adding a device. Next, you're going to go into Smart Things, and you can choose Wi-Fi or Hub. Then you're going to choose the Smart Things Hub 2018. That's the V3 edition. If you had the 2015, that's the V2. Now, they give you some little details here before you set up your device of turning off a switch to mobile data. That is a good thing to follow and you can have a look at that. I didn't actually have to turn that off in order to get this working, but that's definitely some instructions you could follow. Now, the next thing is rooms. You can go ahead and add a room and you can add custom rooms, but if you see the room name that you're putting your hub in, go ahead and select that and then you can select a wallpaper for that room. And once you've done that, you are then going to get into the actual hub setup process when you hit the next button. Now they want you to geolocate where you are and that should automatically go to where you're sitting. Now, how are you connecting the hub? This is a critical spot. So the V3 hub allows you to connect by Wi-Fi or Ethernet. So Ethernet is the cables you can connect into, but you can also just put it anywhere in your home and then attach it to the Wi-Fi signal throughout your home. And honestly, for most people, it's not going to matter what your choice is here in terms of the speed, in terms of the X execution as long as you have a good Wi-Fi system you can definitely use that now I'm going to choose Wi-Fi because that's the hardest way to do this hub setup and now they tell you to connect the power cable and then hit next again now you have to wait a few minutes and you could have connected your power cable a few minutes ago but it's got to be blinking red and green and once it is and the app recognizes this you have to scan the QR code on the back now that was actually a little bit tricky for me to get to work with an Android phone but it just takes a little time and you saw how I kind of pulled back the next thing they're going to ask you to is which Wi-Fi network you're going to connect to obviously this step would not exist if you were connected to Ethernet but then you're just putting in your credentials to your Wi-Fi which is really just selecting it and then putting in your password and you are now registering that hub to Samsung smart things and it will go through a download update and an installation of that update process, but you are done the basic setup of your Samsung SmartThings V3 Hub. 
let's go throughout the home. I'm going to show you all of my different devices and how they contribute. We're going to enter my smart home through the front door and you do see a video doorbell there, but it's not connected to smart things and neither is my door lock on the front door. We'll talk about those devices in a little bit here, but this is a contact sensor or what is called a Samsung smart things multi-purpose sensor and you'll find these for around twenty dollars and what they do is every time you open and close the door the device will actually change status now as it changes status that of course means that your security system can alarm and can let you know when this door is opened whether or not you're at home or not now the device works on a very simple principle that smaller piece sitting right there that is a magnet that's really all it is and then the other side of it has some of the electronics and it wirelessly communicates with the hub that we talked about mine are just stuck on the different doors that i have throughout my home just based on a little Little bit of double-sided tape and I'll show you in a little bit how I do that for myself because there's actually double-sided tape that come on these they are battery powered and so you do every once in a while I would say around a year to two years somewhere in that time frame have to replace the batteries one nice thing about these is they can be hidden inside of doors now these are the closet doors right beside my front door and there's actually a contact sensor on the inside of this now there's a couple of great use cases here you can of course hide away a contact sensor so somebody doesn't know it's there and then you can trigger automation through that but this is also a vibration sensor so when the door moves whatsoever or actually in the case of my closet doors here whenever they are knocked on there is a vibration alarm that can go off so this is another way that contact sensors can be used and by the way they have a temperature sensor on them as well now this is the entry to my garage door and I have another contact sensor here and actually I have a wise lock on the front door now that wise lock does not connect to Samsung smart things but it does allow me to lock and unlock my door with Amazon's voice assistant right now now across the way here on a little platform is the Samsung smart things cam and this is the first camera I'm showing you indoors it has full mounting capabilities and runs around $90 US now you have it plugged in there's a speaker so you can two-way communicate through the device and you have the ability to turn on a night vision and automatically send recordings to the cloud with this camera now there's a bit of a more complex discussion around those cloud recordings and how much they can cost in the end but for most people who have up to four cameras connected to Samsung smart things and just want to keep the cloud recordings for a day that is actually entirely free just around the corner are two devices that you wouldn't think are connected to my security system, but both of them are. Now the Sonos Play 1 sitting here can be connected to Samsung SmartThings and all Sonos speakers can, and then made to say custom notifications. That is a Philips Hue light, and any Philips Hue light can be connected to Samsung Smart Things through the Philips Hue Hub, and then you can actually use different color lights to signify different events in your smart home. This is just a different type of contact sensor, and I'm using it inside of my fridge, but lots of people use these on Windows. These are called the sensitive strips, and they are a Z Wave, so very similar wireless technology contact sensor. And inside of the fridge here, you see that little magnet sitting there. That's the other component component of the contact sensor just like the one on my front door this is a Samsung smart things motion sensor and it's a Zigbee sensor and it runs about $25 the motion sensor can get out about 15 to 20 feet away and has around 120 degree field of view it also has a temperature sensor on it so it's able to read the temperature and allow you to react to that throughout your home so it becomes a very important device in order to detect movement through a space and this is in my kitchen so as soon as someone enters the kitchen I know that they are there 
Now I'm going to show you a bit of a different installation and actually this is the older version of that same motion sensor from Samsung. So you can see it's mounted under my railing here and again just a little bit of sticky tape. This is the same thing as that other motion sensor. It's just the older version and it's hidden under my railing so when people walk past this railing I know and I actually turn on lights with that. That is also a motion sensor so they cannot go upstairs without me knowing that they are moving throughout my home. Now this sensor is actually much more complicated. It has humidity and lux and UV levels as well as temperature and motion. That's from AOTech. That one runs about $50. Now speaking of really expensive devices, this is called the Samsung SmartThings Vision. And some people will get the point of this and some people won't, but this is a privacy first smart home camera that notices whether or not you're a person or a dog or an object moving through the space, but does not show it as traditional or does not show the video as traditional cameras do, smart home cameras do. It's just a USB powered device, but it connects into smart things and it has a whole different set of options because it allows you to still live in your space and not feel like you're being monitored and watched. But it is still an incredible security camera because it can tell you if it's a person moving through your space. And that's the biggest point. Lots of other smart home cameras cannot tell you whether or not a person has entered, only whether or not they've heard a sound or seen motion. And sometimes it's even just light changes that they report. This camera will not do that. So I had promised to show you how I installed and how I dealt with the stickers. Now this is a newer version of the contact sensors you've seen throughout my home. It's again Samsung Smart Things, and they just brought out new versions in 2018 along with that new hub. On the back of the larger piece, you're actually seeing the sticker that you get with this device, and I'm just showing you how it clicks in and works. And Now, what I'm going to do is actually peel off the sticker they give you because it is way too big and will actually peel off wall paint in a lot of cases. Now this is a dual sided clear tape that I use and this is how much I have to cut off for the entire sensor and I could probably cut off less and have this work and I'm going to cut it into four pieces and then I'm going to stick it onto the back of the two components of this contact sensor. Very simple and really small pieces that I'm installing on that smaller just magnet component here. So now we're ready. We've got our double-sided tape ready on the device and you would have had to pull out a battery tab previously so you'll get that in the instructions when you actually buy one of these devices and then you have to pair it and I'm going to show you how to pair this device in a little bit but I just wanted to show you an installation of one of these from a physical perspective. Now this is my uh, patio door to the back of my home and you can see I'm installing this physically on the frame of the door and then I'm putting the other smaller component on to the top. Now I'm putting the larger one on the actual door because it senses vibration and I can use that as a trigger for my security system. And then once the door opens, I will know that the door has been opened and you always have to play with these installations a little bit and that's why I use very little tape for the initial install and that double-sided tape allows me to pull it off and put it back on again but that would be an open right there for my testing that was open that was closed so you have to test these a little bit to make sure you're comfortable now on a window this is a bit of an odd situation you might want to protect this, especially if the window didn't open. Now, I'm just showing you a demonstration here because this window does open, but I just moved that contact sensor over here. And a great way to protect these is to protect the glass from being broken. So you just put that larger component on the glass physically. And again, it can be used as a vibration sensor and will note when the window is vibrating or if the window gets broken, the larger piece will fall and then you will know that that window is quote unquote 
open. This is not really a security device, but this helps you to extend the range of the Zigbee network, and that tends to be important. Zigbee is a lot like Wi-Fi, and so in terms of the distance it can go, it's really very similar, and it runs at the same frequency as your 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. So that's in North America, and it's a little bit different in Europe, but this device is a Samsung SmartThings outlet. It's a Zigbee based outlet so they have Wi-Fi ones but this is the Zigbee version now that Zigbee version is important because it acts as a repeater for your Zigbee network so this really helps to put somewhere else in your home in order to give your battery powered devices a closer connection point to send their messages back and to receive messages. So these can run a little bit more these days because Samsung's not creating a lot of them. And there's other versions of Zigbee smart plugs on the market today. So just as you enter into my home, you can see all the different doors that I have shown you. Here's the bathroom door and there's a motion sensor in the corner there. You can see my lights just came on. That's all through Samsung SmartThings as well. But if that motion sensor detects while I'm not at home, that's another trigger for the system here. So there's really no way for people to enter into this front door or the garage door without being found out in my home. And that's what What's important about every entry point you have, you want to think about how you're going to ensure that you capture that someone has entered your home and that you can deter them from coming in any further if they have done that. Now, here's to my basement and you don't see a contact sensor on this door. And that's a fair point. And sometimes, like I said, you want to hide things. So I actually hid the contact sensor at the bottom here. And you can actually tell that the two sensors are at a 90 degree angle or the two components of the sensor at a 90 degree angle. So they really can't go anywhere without ending up on either a motion sensor, a camera, or a contact sensor and triggering that. And this allows me to, through that Sono speaker, tell them that they are being monitored in the home and recorded by my SmartThings cameras. So really a full system around this kind of door and you have to do the same in your own. Now let me show you a couple of other installations that I think will really benefit you in terms of protecting other areas in your home. So for example here, this is a contact sensor. You can see it's that same contact sensor on a garage door. Now it's showing open right now because of how it has been mounted. You see we're only mounting one half of the bracket here and that means when the door actually goes up this first component falls down and the door shows open. So this is a great method around garage doors. Now I have also just installed a contact sensor as per normal on my garage door and this helps you know if someone's coming into your garage. You can also do things like this where you install a motion sensor in the garage at your entry door. And you saw I had a contact sensor, but this is how I've protected other homes in the past. Now, there are other camera makers that do work with Samsung SmartThings, and if you have windows that look out out of your garage door, this is a great method for looking out. You will have to turn off IR lights or night IR vision lights if you're just mounting looking outdoors. I had mentioned earlier that there are other types of protection and leak detection I think is really important. Now this is another sensitive strip but this is called sensitive drip and you just saw it, it's hidden under my dishwasher and it does if there's a leak act like a leak sensor and it will tell me right away that that dishwasher is leaking which obviously can be very very expensive. Now I have another type of leak sensor from Samsung SmartThings because those sensitive strips do tend to be a little more expensive around again that 40 to 50 dollar range for those but Samsung has their own version around 20 dollars again 
and you can see this is just under my kitchen sink those two gold contacts on the top that will sense if there's water on the top of the device and those two gold ones on the bottom will sense if there's water on the bottom and it will report just the same as your contact sensors and motion sensors that that device is wet and again it has a temperature sensor on it as well some more classes of devices here's the indoor siren 6 from aotech and there's other sirens on the market but a siren can be included in your system to just fire off a very loud sound in case someone enters your home when your system is armed from the same company here is a doorbell and this is just a standard doorbell with a button and then there's actually a chime that goes off in your home as well and this is z-wave again so that's why it's not a video doorbell it doesn't have the same throughput in terms of connectivity as a video doorbell would on wi-fi but it is able to accomplish really very similar things you can also purchase buttons and the one on the left is Zigbee and it's Samsung SmartThings and the one on the right is from AOTech again and it is Z-Wave and those buttons can be used to trigger different events or even turn on and off your smart home monitor system if you don't want to use things like your smartphones. So now that we have your SmartThings hub installed probably what you want to do is get some of the devices installed. Now I'm only going to show you one of those installations of one device and thereafter, you know, there's not many exceptions, but the process becomes really the same for all your different sensors and all your different devices within your smart home. No matter whether or not you have a Zigbee, a Z-Wave or a Wi-Fi device that connects with Samsung SmartThings, you're going to start in the app on the home page, and then you will be hitting the plus button and this will start the process of installing your first device. Now you go up to device and then you can either search at the top right of this page or you can search by brand or by device type and you can also scan the QR code or scan nearby which means if a device is sitting and waiting in pairing mode you can just hit that button and wait but there are a ton of different options now in this case I'm installing a Samsung SmartThings device so I'm going to tap on SmartThings and then I'm going to tap on multi-purpose sensor because that's the type I have and then I have to choose the exact device that I do have that's a model number then I'm going in hitting get started and choosing a room that this device is going to get added to then I'm hitting next and I could scan the QR code physically on the device but I'm just going to show you the hardest way so I hit skip this step and now it's just waiting so I have to pull out the battery tab and wait for the lights on the front to show correctly if they don't don't show correctly for you they're not sitting there flashing the way Samsung smart thing says they should then you may need to do a reset and you can actually just hit the question mark at the bottom of this page in order to see how to do that so if something goes wrong hit the question mark and start the process there but what will almost inevitably happen every time right away is it will switch to this page which means your device has been connected and you need to name that device now you're just having Having to repeat the process over and over again and you can actually tap to go into the card that you see there for the basement door sensor that will allow you to see more details about that device like whether or not it's open or closed the temperature because it's also a temperature sensor but if you wanted to install devices that are cloud connected and there's a number of devices that are like this with Samsung smart things and they're usually whole systems I'm still going back in to add a device as per normal but I'm going to search by brand it's just a little bit easier and a great example if I want to search right up at the top is TP-Link and as soon as I hit TP-Link 
and I tap on the type of device that I want to add, even if I'm adding multiple from the same account, just choose one of them, hit TP link, choose the room I'm putting all the devices into, and then I have to put in my password. Now I didn't have to because I've already done that connection, but that is what happens immediately. You just connect the two accounts together and you are all done. The same thing holds true for voice assistance for that basic first connection. You just hit the plus and go down to voice assistant and then you'll choose which one of those two and put in credentials. Again, I've already made those connections and they're not really hard things for you to do. So you just put in your credentials to either Google Home or Amazon's voice assistant. All right, now, I showed you all these different devices, but I didn't show you a couple of device classes that you're probably wondering about. Now, uh, I didn't show you a smart door lock that interfaces with Samsung SmartThings because I don't have one personally. The Ring video doorbells are the only video doorbells that you can really interface, or at least the only ones that I know of that can be interfaced and work really well with Samsung SmartThings. So those are two classes of devices I didn't show you, but you can look at. And you know, with lots of the door locks, I think that's a thing that lots of people would love to have access to. There's nothing wrong with them. I just have other brands on mine. So <laughs> that that's the problem with being a YouTuber. You have lots of different brands from different people and not necessarily what you, you need to show for every video. So you can go and you can look at some of the big brands. You know, the August locks are really big brands. You can get those integrated. The Schlag locks, Yale locks, those all work. And Quickset, as a new kind of newer up and coming company, has a lot of great lock options as well that you can look at. What you're seeing right here is an Amazon Fire HD 8 tablet with what is called Action Tiles on it. Now, Action Tiles is basically a control interface creation tool that costs about $30 and allows you to attach to a single SmartThings hub. Now, for that $30, you have to create all these different controls and all these different things, but they have templates and they make it really easy to create this. I do have a full video for creating this, but it is a bit of an extensive process. Still, you get great control, can see lots of different things throughout your home, and turn on and off just about everything. So, this is a great way to look at Smart things in your home. So now that we've installed a device and really you'd have to do that for all your devices, now we are ready to install that Samsung SmartThings home monitor solution. And we're going to walk through that whole process. I'll give you all the little tidbits of what I have done throughout my home and this should help you get that whole system set up and ready to go right now. So it's time to actually get our smart home monitor set up and what you will probably see is smart things home monitor down the page on your home page and if you don't there's a quick way through the menu and smart apps but I'm going to show you how to go in here and then we're going to get the whole smart things home monitor system set up so you can tap on any component of this and you will come to this page now there is security smoke and leaks and we can look into each one of these but we're going to start with security so I've tapped into there and now we have the ability to use the radio buttons here to choose to use all of the different types of sensors or to choose the different sensors so I've turned off one of them and now I've gone in and I can actually choose which sensors so if I wanted to choose three out of four I could put check marks next to them and that would allow me to use just three out of four as part of my security system. Now the next thing is motion detection type and because I do have the Samsung SmartThings Vision I could choose only people but for just about everyone here you're just going to leave this as all motion. Now do I want to use all the motion sensors? This is the same function but you'll notice that your cameras are being treated as 
motion sensor so you can pick which ones you want or use them all and then you also have sound sensors now this is just the Samsung smart things camera for me but you may have more with different device types now I want to show you what just happened I hit next and then I went back I hit previous and you'll notice there's an armed away and an armed stay so you have to do this whole thing if you're someone who might want to use a security system when you're at home especially maybe at night you want to put it into armed stay so again you can set which sensors are being used within your security system and then you would hit next now you have to choose the responses that you're going to have from a security event if you have a sound siren connected you can use that then do you want to record video which cameras would you like to record video on in any event do you want to turn on specific lights and you can pick from all of your different lights that you already have connected and this would allow you to either alert someone when they're in the home that hey we know you're here or do you want to maybe in the evening alert yourself in your bedroom you can turn on lights different levels with different colors if you have color bulbs so that's one of the things I do is I actually have the color turning red whenever I'm having a security event and this ensures that I'm going to get up and go have a look at what's going on if you have any connected speakers, you can choose to play an audio notification and you can even get it to read a message aloud when this event happens. You can put that in and then you have all kinds of choices in terms of the voice and the volume that is being used and the language that they are using as well. Next is, do you want all of these responses to start immediately on intrusion or do you want a little bit of a delay? Then you have the push notification and whether or not you'd like a captured image from your cameras and then you hit done and you've set the security component of this whole system up. Now, setting up smoke detectors, this is very simple. You have the same two screens. Which detectors would you like to use and the response and again, you're just hitting done as well. But here here you also have the ability to unlock doors that's maybe the big difference for that system setting up leak sensors in general I would say you're going to just use all of the moisture sensors and here you have an option to close valve so if you have purchased a z-wave valve and and that's generally the type that we see you can actually close your water main if you'd like again you can play notifications turn on lights do all of these other things that you did with the security system so this is really really helpful in order to make sure you've been notified and that the right actions have happened in your home once you've set up all three, you're actually done the initial component of this, but there are a few other things. Now, as I arm the system, you're going to notice armed, but two cameras are off. And whenever you do that, it will actually check whether or not all your devices are connected or things like cameras are turned on. And I'm going to show you how to deal with that in a moment. But going back into the smart things monitor, now you can look at all the devices that are connected and used for the arm modes. And then you you can actually go into a settings screen that allows you to modify a few other things as well. So we can go back into the security system and then there's a security mode reminders at the bottom. Do you want to get reminders on your smartphone when everyone leaves and when anyone arrives and then you can select the members and if you have multiple people with the SmartThings application installed and connected to this hub then they will all get the security mode reminders to turn on the system so that's a really important component you probably want to turn on those security mode reminders but we also have to talk about how you even get all of those people in now we'll do that in a minute but I'm going to show you here here's my smart things vision camera it's not on and so that's why I was getting that notice before where it was saying hey this 
this camera is not on, you turned on the security system, but it obviously wouldn't work. So what we're going to do is create a couple of automations. So I went into the menu and I went into automations and now I'm going to hit the plus to create my first automation on this hub. Now we're going to hit the plus button under if and we're going to choose the member location. Now when I hit the who button, I get the list of all the different members that have become a part of this system. And right now in this hub, it's just one person. When I choose when, it's whether or not they're at home or not. Now, I can also set a delay of any different time I'd like, but I've set a delay for one minute. Now, I'm going to hit next and we're going to the then component. So I'm hitting plus again. And the first thing I want to do is control the devices. So when I come home, I want to turn off my SmartThings camera. I don't need that turned on and I could turn off other devices and obviously I could do other things like turn on lights and play things from speakers if I'd like. So you have lots of opportunity here to automate as you come home, as you walk in the door and I'm, I'm going to eliminate that but I just wanted to show you it. Now in the then section I'm also going to change the security mode because I've just come home to disarmed. So now I'm doing three things because it added to send a notification and I'm turning off my camera and changing the security mode. Now I'm going to rename this to security system off because that is effectively what this automation is dealing with. Now we're going to create a second automation because obviously we need the reverse or in a lot of cases I think you want to reverse. So member location, when they aren't at home, for how long I can delay again for a minute and then I go on to the then portion here and I'm going to do the exact opposite. So we're going to control the devices, make sure that my SmartThings camera is turning on, and I'm going to make sure that my SmartThings vision is turning on as well. So I have to tap into each one of those, turn them on, and then hit the done button for this component. Now I'm going to hit plus again and we're changing the security mode to armed away and this means that again we're turning on the security system in this case when everyone leaves the home. So this is very powerful for you to not have to remember to turn on and off your security system and you can get even more creative with these automations if you'd like. Now. In terms of adding members to your system, there's a couple of different methods to go about this, but the easiest is actually just inside the menu for this system and you can go to members and once you do that, you will be able to hit a plus and then you're going to choose to either send an invitation through email or use a QR code. If you've got their phone right there, then this is a really quick way to do that. So just follow the process here to add a second member. Now, what they will have to do is within the menu and then the settings, now this is on their phone as well as your phone, both of your phones or all of your phones have to have this segment turned on or this setting turned on, get your location from this phone. So that's really important in order for you to get everything you need and then you will need notifications turned on as well. But at this point, you have the basic smart home monitor set up and you are ready to use this system. Let's talk about some of those specialized situations that you might be running into. Now you saw I had a Sono speaker and this will allow you to announce that, for example, someone enters into your home while the security system is active, you can actually create a setup where it says, you're being monitored, this system knows that you are in this home and you probably wanna get out. And that's a great deterrent for people. And, and deterrents are one of the most important components of security systems. It's basically saying you might get caught at this point, so probably time to go. Now, Sonos speakers and a couple of other speaker types can be 
uh, installed or included, they can be added as a device type into Samsung SmartThings. And I've been using an old Sonos Play One speaker in order to do this. And then you can go into the Smart Apps component and install what's called the Speaker Companion or use what's called the Speaker Companion. This allows you to create custom notifications based on different conditions. So think of a virtual switch like a physical switch. So you have a physical light switch and you press it on, you press it off and that's on and off. And if it was a smart switch, it would be read as an on and off by something like Samsung Smart Things or by your phone, you're turning that switch on and off. And a virtual switch is just the same, you just physically don't have the device. Now, I'm not going to show you exactly how to create that, but I'm going to give you the example for how to use a virtual switch in order to trigger things like a speaker or trigger additional notifications with special situations. So let me give you a scenario. This is one of the first things I created for someone. They were getting false positives on a motion sensor and they said, I don't want that motion sensor to trigger my alarm system or my security system every time. I wanna actually have two of them kind of looking in the same spot tell me, okay, you have someone in the place because this one was being affected by other things. It was being affected by light. It was being affected by other things. Let's say you have this situation. You can't do that within the basic smart home security monitor system. You have to actually go and create an automation. Now what you do is you say, okay, both of those sensors have seen motion and my security system is on. And if all three of those conditions are true, then I will trigger on my virtual switch. And then that virtual switch could be put into a Sonos speaker. It could be to, to trigger those custom notifications we talked about. It could be pushed into lights, to turning on light scenes. It could be pushed into a siren, to turn on a siren in a specific case. You have all these additional automation options available to you, and it could be only that situation that you want to trigger a notification on from your security system. Other kind of custom situations, Maybe it's not that custom. Lots of us have kids, I, I have kids, and to be honest, when they're younger, they don't necessarily carry smartphones. So when they're not, what you need is a presence sensor or an arrival sensor for them to basically trigger that on, or you can create other automations that allow them to know how to disarm the security system. And a great example of that is, let's say you left a contact sensor or a door sensor sitting somewhere in the garage and they can get into the garage. It's just sitting there. And what they have to do before they enter the home is simply open that sensor and that disarms your system. You can think about different ways to do that. Maybe they have to press a button. Maybe they have to uh, do things in a sequence. Lots of different options out there for you to disarm the system, but the easiest one is to get them a smartphone that would be then used in the smart home monitor or a presence sensor. We talked earlier about the fact that you can use an iPhone or an Android, and I said, I alluded to the fact that I would speak a little bit more about what the benefits are when you go and you get a Samsung phone versus the others. Yes, you can 100% manage this whole system with an iPhone or an Android that is not Samsung based. The only benefit that you're really going to get are some controls that they are giving as extra interface uh, to within their smartphone. So, Oftentimes that's actually based on Bixby, which is their voice assistant. And most people are not using Bixby at this point. It's not a very widely used voice assistant and they haven't created a lot of great use cases for it. So not necessarily the most useful thing. So I don't worry about the Samsung phone, but we will continue to see them develop that out over time. Smart home cameras are one of the most interesting devices out there and they're very divisive 
actually throughout the community. And I think you need to address your personal privacy before you consider where you are placing your smart home cameras. This is a really important component and I think enough people don't think about that before they go and install them. That's one of the reasons I paid more for what was called that Samsung SmartThings Vision to get it in my home. I felt much more comfortable putting that in my home uh, in order to get coverage and then know someone was in the space. I could tell who the person was by how they walked, how they looked, even within that kind of uh, video, that, that specialized kind of video. I don't need to see their faces and to be honest most of the time even if you give video of someone to the police they can't catch them necessarily unless it's someone they really already know or have seen a number of times so I really like that kind of an option inside of my smart home and then maybe at the entryways using a couple of cameras in order to catch people as they walk in the door. But again, I like that Samsung SmartThings vision. I'd rather know that someone is in the place and that really narrows down. It, it doesn't give any false positives and I think that's a really important component as well. So it's private and it, it doesn't give false positives. It knows the difference between a dog and a person, whereas most smart home cameras will just tell you, I see movement, you need to look at the notification. And when you have that kind of a scenario, what happens is you get so many notifications that in the end you stop listening to those notifications and you might miss the one that is very important. Control panels are a really interesting way to manage the whole scenario and there's not something that Samsung just sells directly, but they do have a couple of options for you in terms of partners. Action Tiles is what I have and many of the people I've interviewed and talked to, they have that as well. It's about a $30 expense and you can go and build your own panel on really any tablet or any display that you have at your disposal. All you have to do is get to that website and get logged in and you don't have to log in a bunch of times. You can kind of keep that panel up and control your smart home from there, including turning on and off your security system. So you can actually mount one of those at the door if you'd like. Sharp Tools is another system that you can use to create panels and control and other uh, rules and automation as well, really deep automation. So both of those systems are something good to look at, especially if you'd like to create an additional uh, interface for control. Interfacing with other systems, Google, Amazon, Apple, those are those are big systems and then there's there's systems like Philips Hue and and things like that. You're going to have that question at some point. And the fact is, there's integration methods with all of those. Philips Hue is immediate, easy and happens uh, within seconds through the normal method of adding a device and you just search Hue and add their bridge and then you get all of those lights and all of those devices you have on Philips Hue. Google and Amazon, both of those are Samsung devices get pushed into Google Home and then you have to manage all of that. There's a, there's a lot of content around that, but that's how it goes. And then you can use the voice assistants to control some of Samsung smart things. With uh, each of those systems, there's special hacks and there's special workarounds for creating really elaborate ways of, of turning on the security system. So for example, Amazon Guard, uh, that's Amazon's method of using the Echo speakers to listen for gla uh, glass breaking or smoke and CO alarms. That's a really great thing to have turned on, but it's an extra step. If you go to leave the house and Samsung SmartThings, uh, its monitor turns on and then you don't turn on Amazon's Guard, well, you kind of got this dual step uh, to turn on your whole security system. So there's a method, there's a video down below that you can go and watch that I have created that will allow you to do just that as you come into your home or you leave your home. Apple's a bit of a funny case because you need what's called a home bridge. Not going to talk about that any deeper at this point. And there's many other cloud integrations. I use a company called SwitchBot. And when I say cloud integrations, I mean Samsung's cloud service is communicating with 
switch bots cloud service and that means both of their devices talk to that cloud service and the device status gets updated there and then they communicate and it comes back down so if i turn on my switchbot humidifier what happens is it goes to switchbots cloud and then samsung smart things gets that status that the humidifier is on and then it ends up in my hub and then it can trigger routines now those cloud-based integrations are slower for executing automation and for using for security purposes as well so there you go guys that's everything i'm going to walk through if you have more questions of course leave those down below i know this was a huge video and it was a massive undertaking to produce so i want to tell you about two things all the different resources they're down below and we also have the ability for you to support the channel here through what is called patreon and i have a number of patrons who come they get additional access to me for a small fee or a donation it's really a donation at this point to automate your life so Go ahead, check that out or join Automate Your Life here for more great content around Samsung Smart Things and how to automate your life in general. Otherwise, thanks for watching everyone. And of course, don't hate, automate.